prospecting with the Welsh. There's the pickaxe. And that's Welsh wielding it. And look at that. He's discovered baseballs. And he's going to discover some prospects you need to add to your roster. So Welsh, let's start with Joey Loperfito. Joey Lowe, as I like to call him. Although in Philadelphia, it'd be Loperfito. That's how Looper they would say it. Okay. Wawa. Joey, go get me a hoagie and a Coke. Come on, Joey. Yes. All right. So let's talk about prospects that we are going to stash. Joey Luperfito is near the tippy top of the list. He is in this top five that I've got for you because he has been the most prolific power hitter so far in the minors. Interestingly enough, he had quite a few homers in the first couple of games with a really bad low batting average. And then he has completely taken off. He is the only minor leaguer so far to have double digit homers. And we're talking about like 15 or 16 games. He's gotten his batting average over 300, those double-digit homers, and the power is for real. But his ability to continuously maintain high batting average is the question. There was actually a broadcast a couple of days ago when jo Joey Luperbito was you know, still popping with all the homers being at the very tippy top, and they had uh, Astros management on, and they kind of poured a little bit of cold water on it, saying that he had a few little stance-based things to still work on. So pretty much what they're saying is, is like he kind of has like a, a like a lower body sense to how he approaches and comes up. That I think they want him to fix something in his approach before they make this big commitment. But there's also going to be some type of a push at some point where a you well, want offensive support and b like this guy is just too good for this level. Too good to be down yeah. there, but also Jose Abreu is done. Like he's gonna get DFA'd, I think, by Memorial Day. I don't think Luper Fito's gonna take a first base spot. He, I mean, he he can kind of play around. He's been playing in the outfield, but they've also been playing like you know Jake Myers. Like Jacob Myers has been out there. Like like Luper Fito is the guy that they can put in there. But I worry a little bit about batting average. So I think it, you should pick up Joey Luper Fito now and stash him because I think we are in a two to three week window where he comes up. But beware that it could be a little bit open with some okay. bad batting average. Now, one guy that did make my waiver wire video this week because he's only rostered in about 60% of leagues now because he got hurt to start the year was Junior Caminero. I want everybody to add him again. Let's talk about uh, Junior Caminero and maybe some ETAs in your opinion. Well, we thought the injury was going to really you know, pour a massive amount of cold water on this entire situation. He missed almost two weeks, but right on his day back, smash. Smash a home run, first game back, opposite field stuff. He just got crazy pure raw power. He currently has a 3-4-6 slash in the minors right now. I mean, absolutely absurd, over 600 slug. His strikeout rate has been a little bit higher than you want, and that might be something that the Rays hold back a little bit. He is walking. He's got two homers. He has a stolen base and over 300 ISO right now. And the Rays offense has been kind of, eh. Yeah, like I, I mean, think they could justify it. The only problem is, is Isak Paredes has been pretty good. So when they do it, the commitment's going to have to be an Isak Paredes going to play maybe DH or Camonero and him going back and forth, unless they went back to his original spot of having him be a shortstop. Like Luperfito, a lot of these players I'm talking about, I think Camonero is in that two to three week window. We're closing in where you get extra year of arbitration. That's the most important thing to the Rays. But I think it's still going to be right around May. But he is at the top of the list because he's a top prospect in baseball, Joe. Yeah. Uh, all right. Caminero. Again, we all say add James Woods, a guy we've been talking about a lot. Uh, he's just been tearing it up. So uh, any change this week over a last from the James Wood discussion? Uh, not that there's any just massive change outside of like this ticking clock is as big as it's ever been. And one thing I just wanted to point out, this is another guy, three, four, five slash currently big numbers, two homers, 14 runs, five stolen bases. I want to remind you, he's six foot seven, 240 pounds. But the most impressive thing, why I think not only is he coming up soon, but he is going to find success is the lowered K rate. He has the same walk and strikeout rate right now, 20%, striking out 20% of the time and walking 20% of the time, which is absolutely crazy. He had an over 33% strikeout rate last year in double A. He's good friends with Jackson Merrill. He actually spent some of the offseason with Jackson Merrill. I like to pretend in my little world that he ended up getting some more plate presence and working on his strikeouts. He has got the tools of tools. When you think about the Ellies of the world, this is that guy. He's stealing a ton of bases. He is coming soon. And the Nationals are winning some games. There's only so much longer they're going to keep him down. Again, if May 1st hits and James Wood isn't up, I would be surprised. Good question here from Brandon. Stashing uh, Kierstead right now, would you hold on to him or prefer Loperfito? 
I like Kirstad better as a hitter from what I've seen, but and it's not a knock on low profito. I, I just, that's how much I like Kirstad. Here's my only thing. I feel like the low profito pathway is sooner. Like I, I think right now Kirstad's kind of stuck, you know, Cedric Mullins is a big walk-off moment too. Like, I, I don't know if there's room at the in right now for him, whereas low profito right now, I mean, the Astros are struggling. They need to figure some stuff out. What do you think? I agree with you on that. <clears throat> I'll tell you this. Um, Kershaw's in an interesting spot because that team, that, that Norfolk team is ridiculous. Oh I do believe that he's the next Oriole to come up, except if something were to happen where the Orioles kind of let go of this Jackson Holiday stuff, where like Jackson Holiday, they've given him a very large rope. And if and they, they were to decide to cut that, I mean, come on. But if they were to decide to cut that, it wouldn't make sense for Kershaw to take his spot because no, he Connor Norby play does, right? Infield. No, Kobe Mayo. Well, oh, Connor right. Norby would make some sense, but I think they move Westberg over to second, and Kobe Mayo would be a person okay. to play third. But Kershaw yeah, is talk about embarrassment of riches. Like you can't, you can't even, it's, it's crazy. They're is the, the Norfolk team better than the, the White Sox right now. <laughs> maybe better than the A's. Yeah, maybe better than the White Sox. They would die to put that roster out here. But seven homers for Kershaw. You want to check out where he ranks versus Luperfito? Go check out my article on Fantasy Pros right now for prospects to stash. You can uh, absolutely see where he ranks as a top 10 list. But I got two more in their pitchers, Joe, yeah, if you want to plow through them. There. Yeah, uh, the, the easy quick one is Paul Skeens. Paul Skeens, he's coming again May 1st. If he's not called up, I would be surprised. 20% swinging strike rate. He has an over 50 K minus walk percentage, which is absolutely absurd. Three starts, though, of three innings. They are saving those bullets or they're babying him. We still don't know. I'm leaning on saving those bullets and he'll be up soon. And then finally, we've talked a decent amount about him. If we are highlighting a top five stash uh, situation here, Christian Scott. Uh, uh, yeah, Christian Scott with the New York Mets. We've talked about his last start, 10 strikeouts over five innings. He's got a four ERA, but he's got a sub one whip, 19 strikeouts and in nine innings. I love the combination of the fastball slider with the splitter that he implements. And I think he's going to be up pretty, pretty soon. And there's more names over on my article. Like I said, over on Fantasy Pros, or you can follow me on Twitter at Is It The Welsh to see it. 10 names and even a few more names that you can uh, keep on your watch list moving forward in the year. 10 things I love about you, Welsh. Oh, Aww. that would be a good one. Oh, uh, yeah, there yeah. you go.